When Steve Scalise was shot at a baseball practice for an upcoming charity game last year, his fight for life made news around the world. Scalise had been House Majority Whip for several years, but all of a sudden, he'd become a household name. When he came back to Congress after months in the hospital and rehabilitation, it was an emotional day for him, his colleagues, and for many Americans. Today, Steve Scalise is on a full and very busy schedule as House Majority Whip. He meets regularly with House leadership, has staff meetings in his office whenever he's in Washington, walks from meeting to meeting around the Capitol, down long halls, even spiral staircases, and gets standing ovations when he walks into a room, like this visit to a Texas congressman's constituents. You might think after all the time Steve Scalise has spent here on Capitol Hill and the power he's amassed that he might become complacent. No, he still pinches himself every day that he's gotten this far. And that's very evident when he shows off his impressive digs in the Capitol building. His office is filled with stuff any Louisiana boy or girl would love, and the view from his window is spectacular, almost as good as the view from the White House. Uh, it's not a bad view from the White House. The president gets to see the opposite view, yeah. to see directly at the Washington Monument and then over to the Jefferson Memorial, which is over there, but to be looking right down the mall at, uh, at yeah. Washington and Lincoln. You know, you think you're having a rough day and you look out there and it really puts it into perspective. It makes you recognize how great the country is and how lucky people like me are to have this opportunity. Scalise is proud of what he's been able to accomplish, but never seems to flaunt it. And he could. Being majority whip comes with a lot of perks. A big office, a staff of more than 30 in Washington alone, offices that occupy space on three floors in the U.S. Capitol, including a meeting room right off Statuary Hall with his name on the door. It was in this room, the Lincoln Room, where we sat down with the congressman, and he loves to tell the story of how he renamed this place after Abraham Lincoln. And this was the cloakroom. This room here is where members of Congress would just hang out in the 1800s, and it was even more important then than the cloakroom we have today because members didn't have their own offices. So today, if you go to the cloakroom right now, there's nobody there in between votes. People are back in their offices, meeting uh, with their staff, with constituents. Uh, this is where they would hang out, and uh, Abraham Lincoln served for one term in the 1840s, and they told me when they were showing me all this office space, they had some desks here, uh, so the majority leader had two desks in this room and some cubicles out there, and uh, they said this is where Abraham Lincoln used to sit, right by this fireplace. Really? And he would just, you know, he'd read, he would talk to members, and just kind of hang out. And, uh, you know, I looked around, and I said, how can you have all this history and nobody knows about it? Well, they do now, thanks to Steve Scalise. He loves showing off this room, including a trap door that even some of his staff members told us they had never seen. But first, he likes to brag a little about a picture that hangs in the hall leading up to that secret door. It was taken at a charity baseball game when Scalise stole home with Congressman Cedric Richmond on the mound for the Democrats. I was on third. Cedric threw a pitch, and it was a little bit of a wild pitch, so I took off. And uh, Cedric was going to the mound, and they, uh, the Roll Call magazine took this picture. And you can see Cedric's face just going, I'm never going to hear the end of it. You and guys are on opposite ends of the spectrum, <laughs> yeah. but you guys are close friends. Cedric and I remained close. In fact, he was the first person to come to the hospital after I was shot. Scalise says he sent Richmond an autographed copy of the picture, but added, for some reason, his Democratic friend doesn't display it. And now it's on to the secret trap door, which really is pretty cool. You might not notice it right now, but uh, this is one of these real neat things about the old Capitol. This was, it's a trap door. So if you pull on it. Let me help you. Really, where does it go? There's a spiral staircase that goes down to the first floor. Legend has it that this is the staircase that the British used to come up into the Capitol when they burned the Capitol down in the War of 1812. So, uh, you know, they decided, I guess we don't want the British to come in again, so they sealed it up. So when you go down there, uh, it's just a little kind of I, I a dead end. I would assume that's where Congress sneaked out after a bad vote. I can't tell you. I can't tell you if, if somebody's voting the wrong way, this might be where they end up. On a more serious note, we did want to know how becoming Majority Whip changed his life. It's a lot more intense. You have a lot more meetings. Uh, and the meetings are, are more national focused, uh, meeting with the president, with his top staff. Um, and meeting with the speaker and majority leader but on a regular basis. personally changed your life? Because you, you, have, you have a detail that follows you wherever you go yeah. now. It, you know, I have security that, that comes with me now. Uh, you know, initially I thought that was a little odd. Uh, I learned now that it, it, there's a real reason why they're there. But, 
you know, and they it, saved your life. Yeah, they saved my life. I wouldn't be here today if not for the, the heroic efforts of the United States Capitol Police. And for all he's been through, nearly losing his life and not being able to get around like he used to, Scalise is grateful to be getting healthier every day and for the chance to be in a place he truly loves. Yeah, you, you still have to pinch yourself every day. And, you know, to me, at the end of a long day, you're walking out of the Capitol and it's really quiet and, you know, all the tourists are gone. And you walk through that rotunda and you just look up and you see uh, the beautiful rotunda. You can see the statue of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson as you enter the House chamber and Ronald Reagan's right there. And, uh, you know, it, you still get goosebumps. And, and to me, that never gets old. And, and if it ever gets old, you know, that's when it's time to leave. And Scalise is not ready to go. In fact, with Speaker Paul Ryan leaving Washington and if Republicans hold on to the House in November, there is talk of Speaker Steve Scalise. You know, one day I know it's something that uh, I sure would, you know, have an interest in doing that job and doing it the right way. Uh, but I'm not there right now and I've got to stay focused on doing my job. And my philosophy has always been do your job that you have uh, the best of your ability and, and get as much done as you can while you have that opportunity. And then other opportunities will present themselves because if you're not doing your job well, you're not going to have those opportunities. So, you know, work hard, play hard and then celebrate the victories along the way. For now, though, Scalise is happy where he is and reminds us as we say goodbye in Statuary Hall, there's a lot of Louisiana represented here. Here we are in the, the room that used to be the House Chamber in the yeah. 1800s with all that history. There's only two doors in here, and both of them have a name on it, and both of them are from Louisiana. That's the Whip's office with my name on it, and that's the Lindy Boggs room. Oh. It's, the, it's a room that they made for female members of Congress, and they named it after Lindy Boggs. So Isn't how about that? that? Awesome. Both, both of these rooms are uh, named after, have the name of somebody from Louisiana. And Steve Scalise is hoping his name stays right where it is for a while. Eric Paulson, Eyewitness News.